A very pleasant good evening to you as we welcome you to another edition of the Storm Report. This is episode 10, season number two, and we welcome everybody inside the Tower Grill here on the campus of Arizona Christian University. I'm your program host, Kevin Derryberry. On the other side is my broadcast partner, Mr. Ed Cole, and the man in the middle is the head coach of ACU football. Jam-packed program once again here this evening. We will be delighted with the presence of ACU women's and men's swim coach, Mr. Brad Herring, will join the program, as well as we'll talk a little wrestling. We're going to take it to the mat with Michael Butterfield. So uh, some great things happening for both programs, and we'll talk all about it here on the show tonight. Without further ado, let's welcome in the head coach, Jeff Bowen. JB, good evening, sir. How are you? Good. How are you guys? We're doing fantastic. Excellent. My man, Eddie Cole, how are you? Good evening. We reunite KD, once coach? again. Yes, been a while. Everybody's clad in red tonight, so uh, fantastic. Good. We got the red memo. First and foremost, Coach Bowen, the author of Team Number Nine, if you would just elaborate a little bit. What a, an electric season! <laughs> uh, one that we will remember for a long time. And you talk about people building, cultural enrichment, all that. You talk about some incredible people that you had a chance to coach this year. It was a special group. Is probably one of the most gratifying seasons I've had in 35 years of coaching is uh, to, to go from where we were at the beginning of the year to where we finished up was was an amazing journey and just the guys the players and the coaching staff um, to be able to do what we did and um, to finish uh, you know conference champs and play uh, play in the you know the championship series again was a uh, was special for sure. And, of course, you, uh, you pulled out some more hardware, Sooner Athletic Conference champions as well. Yeah, we get to design ring number four, so that's kind of cool. So that's exciting. The guys, uh, are, it's a well-deserved honor, and, and uh, so that's kind of fun. And, and uh, so we'll do that, and then, uh, you know, we'll start working on one for the thumb. Very good. All right. And also some breaking news came out today. More, more hardware, I guess, giving out 18 of your players were selected to the, to the All-Sooner Athletic Conference team. Tyler Duncan, Manny Higuera, uh, two first-team All-Sooner Athletic Conference players. Eighteen of your guys got, nom- got uh, uh, achievements for being on this, uh, this All-Sack Selections, Coach. Yeah, I'm excited for the young man to, to make All-Conference. I mean, uh, accolades are, are for players that play the game, and, and I'm excited for, for the young men who, who made it. Um, you're never... You're never 100 percent happy with when a team comes out. You always think your guys uh, deserve better, and uh, absolutely, it's no different this year. And uh, you know, um, unfortunately, it is what it is. Coaches vote, and it is what it is. So, um, uh, but my guys, I wouldn't trade them for for anything. Uh, they're outstanding. They they've done a great job, and and they deserve uh, every honor that they receive. No question about that, Coach. I'm curious how it works when it comes to the voting for the coaches. How, like, who puts that on? Because I just disagree. So I just want to. Uh, Are you biased? I don't, I don't want to home her up, but I just want to say, hey, I, I think that I think uh, Joe Prudhomme with Tex West is certainly could share the honor. And you know, this is my opinion, but uh, I, I thought f- to win seven straight, to come back and win the crown and have a share of the crown, to get your team in the dance. Uh, was pretty impressive. Uh, again, I under agree. adverse conditions. So I thought you, I was shocked that I didn't see your name there. To be honest, well, with you. I, I appreciate your your thoughts and feelings. Joe, Joe's team uh, they they were outstanding this year. Absolutely. And coach Coach Maddox, I tell you, he does a, a really really outstanding job at Louisiana Christian. To be honest, he's uh, you know he's he he, he would be a, a top a top pick in in my eyes also. So um, yeah, it's all subjective. It so, is. But- um, I, I appreciate the thoughts and uh, congratulations to those two gentlemen on their seasons. And uh, the bottom line is, um, we, we preach team here, and our team uh, had an exceptional year. You know, uh, eight and two, conference champs. Uh, you know, uh, and then playing in the national, be be the team that played and represented the conference in the tournament. Uh, would we take that every year? You know, so. Um, we'll, we'll leave it at that, and and uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> be diplomatic about it. I know we're we're yeah. still we're a few few weeks past Morningside, but this is our first chance to talk to you about it. Mm-hmm. Can you just kind of reflect on on what happened in that game? And you you were down three going into the fourth quarter. So as far as the effort, you could not have asked your men to play as well as they did. 
as well, far as efforts concerned. Yeah, you know, all the pro- prognosticators, all the people a lot smarter than me, was said, you know, depending on who you talk to, they, it was going to be, you know, they were going to roll up 60 or 70 points, and we, we weren't going to have very much. So um, they're outstanding. I mean, they are uh, uh, a high-quality program, three, three national championships in four years, uh, so that speaks for itself. And they have, it does. They have mm-hmm. some high-quality players. But I tell you what, once our guys uh, – Got, got in that game and settled down a little bit. We, we went toe-to-toe with them. And um, we always talk about taking the, the next step and building blocks. And I think that you saw that, um, that we can compete at the highest level with the best team in, in NAI. Um, it was drastically different than two years before when we went and played Kaiser, who is an outstanding team, uh, who, who beat Morningside this last week. And and uh, if I had to pick a team, uh, I'd put my money on Kaiser right now. I think uh, they're they're a tough football team. And yeah. uh, but to, but to be on the field with Morningside and 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 not not back down. Our guys didn't flinch. I mean, uh, down twenty one nothing in the first quarter. That's when Morningside usually just puts people away and buries them. And um, you know, and we went into halftime down twenty one to nothing. And the. the there was a kind of a w- eerie calmness in the locker room. You know, our guys weren't freaking out or, or playing the blame game or anything. We just made a few little adjustments. Defense, I mean, defense was, once they settled down, uh, they did a great job. I think they went 10 straight series where they punted. Seven of the 10 were three and out. So our defense settled in and played really good football. Um, in offense, we got got some things going in the in the passing game and stuff. We had trouble running the ball, but we got some things going in the passing game. And and um, you know our guys our guys made a game of it. You know, Absolutely. like you said, mm-hmm. it's twenty one eighteen going into the fourth quarter. If someone had said, "Hey, coach, twenty one eighteen going into the fourth with Morningside," I'd say, yeah, I'll, "I'll take it." Well, we're in the fight. Let's see what happens. You know, so all day long, just really proud of the guys and their effort. And uh, it was, like I told you guys before, it was a microcosm of our season. You know, uh, we started out rough just like in the game, just like we did the season. And, um, you know, people think it's over and it wasn't over. And uh, that's the way we played and that's the way we played the season. So uh, this is a special group. Uh, They've added to the legacy of of, um, ACU football and they, they left a lot for Team 10 next year to, to live up to and, and hopefully add to that legacy. Coach, when you, you look back at Kaiser and then you look back to Morningside, you know, what a difference a couple of years makes, right? The, the yeah. maturation process yeah. from you, your staff, uh, what you took away from that experience. Nothing was in vain. You learned a ton, and uh, you were able to um, set this trip up accordingly. And you gave yourself and your football team and your staff an opportunity to win and uh, I think that's that's all anybody could ever ask for is how you prepared for that opportunity and you guys delivered. Yeah, I think um, I think uh, what really helped also is you know you travel playoffs in the NAI you travel fifty seven, you know that's what you're allowed and twenty four of our fifty seven uh, played uh, and was on the on the field in that Kaiser game so they learned a lot sure. and they learned you know what they really learned they learned what they didn't want to be um, and. Uh, no, no, no offense to to our team that that played in that game, but it was the first time ever. Uh, it was a you know a lot of excitement and you know making the national tournament for the first time, and there was just so many factors that um, we didn't our players didn't have to deal with this time around because they'd already been there, mm-hmm. and and those guys could share that knowledge with the guys that hadn't. So that that was a huge huge factor in us just being able to stay calm. Uh, in the moment and and play football and uh, you know as crazy as it sounds the cold was not a major factor you know we're tough guys out here coach hey, we play in the heat <laughs> but we'll bring the heat so of course uh, um, but the, it was the the five degrees with chill factor was was different but our, it was more the wind the wind was different yeah how know? like I don't think we could get a, a, a true 
feel for how difficult that was. Like, it, it was beyond kite flying weather. Like, it was just, it was chaotic. Yeah, you, 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 you couldn't even score on one end of the football field. Either team. You, you, so, you had to have two different game plans. Punts that we try to go in the wind. You know, you speak about punting, just one yeah. special team's aspect. Who would have thought that Sean Bailey would punt ten times ten that times. game? Maybe have a, a, a record that I don't think he ever punted ten yeah. times in a game ever before that. Right. But that just, like you say, a microcosm of, of the season in a yeah, sense. Yeah, they punted a bunch. I mean, both defenses settled in and and, and did a, did a good job, but yeah, um, the punting and just the win. You you literally had to have a different mindset of calling the offense, um, and also what you're doing on defense. You know, going with the wind and against the wind. It was a uh, it was a it was unique. It was different. That's for sure. <laughs> How clutch was it that somebody came through and hooked ACU up with the with the cold weather gear uh, to make that happen? And you know, looking forward. You know, going to change conferences, so I'm, I'm going to imagine that uh, there's going to be a need for that cold weather gear again. Yeah, we're, we're not too far away. We're, mm-hmm. we're ready for it now. But yeah, the <laughs> our athletic department did a did a great job. We were able to get the stuff in and 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 here on time and stuff. And uh, and we had some donors um, that assisted. And, and thank you to the the donors. Thank you that, to our donors that did. Yes. And, God and, bless. Um, you know the our administration that helped out with that and. Uh, it it was uh you know it was it was just a different different vibe and and uh even when we were there on friday and we were practicing out in it that night at the stadium you know our guys are like we're we're okay coach we're not we're going to be fine you know and uh and they were uh it was a it was, like i said it was just another step in our program's uh history and and we look to build on that next year. Do you have a hat on that night, Coach, or that uh, afternoon? A beanie. beanie? You know, a okay. beanie and a hood. And, 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 you probably looked the part, right? A little style. I did. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, my, my wife made sure I didn't embarrass myself in the cold, so appreciate that. But you looked a little more stylish than Belichick does when, with his hoodie on, right? Yeah, I, I think I look much better, but... <laughs> You know, well, you know, it's not going to be ripped. At least it's going to be sewn. <laughs> yep. You know, he's going to have uh, right. You know, nice gear on. Right. Yeah. Yep. Coach, so a two-parter for you: for the young men whose last game that was, what did you mm. what did you say to them? And for the young men that are going to come back, how motivating was that to know that? Okay, now we're moving to the Frontier Conference. Yes, we're we're done with the, with the Sooner Athletic Conference. But as you mentioned, this program is where it is right now, and there's leaps and bounds, even much even greater things that are coming for this football program. So just the two parter on that one. You know, um, it's always it's a bittersweet when you you let your seniors go. Um, you know, it's an, an emotional thing, especially for the ones that have been been with us a long period of time, um, and it's just. Uh, and, and it's different when you when you're when you're lo- when you lose in the playoffs because it happens suddenly, <laughs> you know it's over right there. So, um, just just the time with the players, the the feelings of uh, you know how they feel about their coaches and how we feel about them. Um, it's it's a it's a bittersweet special time, and those are the things we talk about it all the time with the players. Those are the things that they're going to remember. Um, you know you're. You don't remember all the scores and, and those type of things, but you remember the friendships and the relationships. And I tell the players this uh, when we talk about building a legacy. There's there's going to be a time in their life when they're sitting there and um, you know their son's going to be sitting on their lap and say, hey, Dad, what did you do? Mm-hmm. And um, they're going to talk about their college playing days. And we're always better later on anyway, so... But that, but then they're going to talk about the friendships and the relationships, and their, their best man was, you know, played next to them, and, and those type of things. So mm-hmm. that's that's where it's at with your seniors. And then, you know, when we get back and the seniors leave the room, and and then the rest are sitting there. I'm like, well, look around, fellas, because this is the group. You you got to decide if you're going to be a part of this and build for the future, or is this just more than you you bargained for and, and you. Maybe time to shake hands and part ways and move on with life. That's just part of it too. Um, but um, and that's been the beauty of each year, you know. And uh, our, our our legacy guys, our alumni that have come in and talked to them throughout the the season and and uh, just share the experience that um, and how proud our alumni and and uh, legacy players are. Uh, when they come back and they talk to them, you know, we're, we've gotten to that point. You know, we. We're, this was year nine, so there's guys that are out in the real world with jobs and wives and kids and and paying bills and and but they still follow us. You know, they're hitting me up the night before. 
you know, or, or congratulating us on championships or showing up at games or coming in to speak to the guys. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. That fraternity, yeah. Coach, yeah. That, that family. Yep. Uh, great shot of you and your lovely wife uh, on Twitter recently with the grandkids. That's pretty cool. That's, that sets the stage for the family. So when you see the big guy right there leading the way yeah. like that, which is just natural. Yeah. Uh, it's good stuff to see you guys have so much fun like that. And uh, be able to do that. Uh, 30 seconds or less, uh, when do you put the oars back in the water and start uh, moving towards the Frontier con- Conference? Uh, we, uh, we already, the oars have been in the water. We, they, okay. they never left the water. We kind of assumed that, but, you know, for everybody at home. <laughs> We're rowing yeah, the boat right that, now. Right yeah, now. We, got, we got some mid-year guys coming in for a recruiting visit this weekend. Good. We got okay. mid-years for the next three weeks. And then January, we'll be bringing in our, our future freshman uh, commits and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm doing exit evaluations and stuff with our, our current roster and and closing that chapter and continuing to build for next year. So we're we're at it full full go right now. Yeah. Uh, last building. quick point. Any news to break? Everybody coming back? You, uh, any, have you got any word on anybody? That, uh, we're just we're waiting. And we'll we're, find out when you find out. Yeah, we're, we're – they're never all back. That's just the reality of okay. it, you mm-hmm. know. Okay. Um, and uh, but we're you know we're going to have a great nucleus of, of players coming back, um, you know we've uh, a lot to build on. The successes we've had, we can build on. Taking it to the next level can be built on, and then bringing in the right guys, you know that's always the key. Coach, it's, it was our absolute pleasure to uh, be behind the mic at the 50 yard line for your your home games, and uh, Ed and I had a, a, just a blast. And uh, we're thankful of your football team, your entire staff, to a man, and of course all those players. Uh, we just we had a blast, and we uh, well we we, we appreciate we appreciate everything you guys do. You know, there's uh, you know our broadcasts and, and the time and effort you guys put into it have, have grown immensely over the years, and uh, our our fan base and our, our parents, and especially our out of state fan base, really really enjoy it. I hear nothing but positive things, and I appreciate everything you guys do. Um, so let's just, uh, we'll just put it on our calendar. We'll get started up with this. You let's know. do it again. Let's run it back, let's, as they say, right? That's right. Let's, run it back. We'll hit it, we'll hit it in September, and we'll do this again, only in the Frontier. Yes. yes. In the Frontier there Conference. We are, we're already geeked up for that. Coach, thank you again. Thank and, you, Coach. Uh, thank you. You have a, a great holiday season the rest of the way. And, you too. Uh, we're going to turn it to the pool. I don't know if you're into swimming, Coach, but uh, we're going to talk with Brad Herring, and I, uh, we're yeah. going to talk about swimming. The swimming I, program is taking off right now. I like to sit in the pool and relax. <laughs> yeah. I don't do a lot of, <laughs> but, yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to talk uh, with our men's and women's swimming coach. Brad Herring joins the show right after this. Roll storm. We welcome you back inside the Tower Grill on the campus of Arizona Christian University for the Storm Report episode number 10, season number 2. This is the Storm Report for Monday, November 28th. Can you believe it, Coach and Eddie? We're already through November. My goodness. It's crazy. 2022 has been an absolute blur. Coach, uh, congratulations now on your third year. Uh, Things are going well in the pool, my friend. 
Yeah, they are. We're, we're building the team up, uh, men's and women's. Uh, when we started out here, we, were at, we didn't have a pool. <laughs> and thanks to Hobby Lobby and, and ACU Connections and God's blessing, we got a pool so we can train. And uh, it's working out really well. We're getting some new uh, athletes that are upping the, the bar on on uh, workload and, and uh, different diverse uh, events that there's many events, as you know, from the Olympics. So mm-hmm. got to cover them all. Mm-hmm. Did I see somewhere that we have the ACU Aquatic Center? Is that, that's, is that new? Um, something fairly new? It's, uh, it's, it's with the uh, Firestorm Rec Center, and, and Hobby Lobby donated $3.5 million to buy the whole thing for that's us. Great. So How about that? We wow. have water, and, uh, you know, the first year, I was like, you know, I know how to coach. I've been around the world, and... And it's hard to recruit without water. <laughs> you got to have some juice, right? Swim in canals and whatever we got to do. Mm-hmm. But uh, And I wanted to have some fun with Coach Herring. Of course. Just make sure that yeah. uh, Coach Herring was qualified, right, to be our head coach here at ACU. Oh, of he's course, qualified. Of course, guys that uh, are in a different pay category here uh, have made that decision. But we know he's qualified. But how about a degree in physiology at Arizona State University? And then how about a four-time All-American at ASU, uh, spent some time in that Mono Plumber Aquatic Center, to say the least, huh, Coach? That's right, and and so was uh, my assistant coach Rob Oldak, who's who's here uh, most of the time, uh, coaching with me. I mean, imagine coaching with your best swimming Christian friend. So don't don't tell my boss, but it, you know it is really a hobby. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a passion, and it is work. Obviously, it's work when you work with any athletes, but. But it's a dream to have uh, uh, a guy that you actually recruited. I recruited him to Arizona State. Wow. We swam together. He's been a lifetime friend. He's been there through trials and, and uh, celebrations. So I, I rejoice <clears throat> having a lot of fun. That's awesome. We can relate to that just a little bit. Ed and I have been friends for a long, long time, and this is our hobby as well. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yes, so. it is. Because he was talking yes, about you earlier, and it wasn't so good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, whoa, no, I'm, whoa. Just kidding, I'm just kidding. That's surprising. I'm kidding. Don't do that, Coach. I could do that. I'm sorry, man. I could take you know that that's a lie, level, but we won't. We won't. We'll just you know that's there. a lie. You know, I just, I just want to see if you guys are loose. You look a little, you know, we're good. I just want to loosen you up a little bit. Coach, as far as recruiting, you and I were talking about, um, you, you said you've got a miracle player, a, a miracle swimmer on your, on, your fem- on your ladies' team, Katarina yes. Kasharina. Yes. Tell us about her. She's from the Ukraine. Yes. I mean, you know, they're all, they're all miracles, of course, but it's a miracle story that she got here. Because, um, you know, in, when that war started 10 months ago, I guess it was, you know, you read and you, you can become indifferent about, you know, watching on TV what Russia's doing, what Ukraine's doing, and, and you're seeing bombs and all that. And, and it really got to my heart that, Lord, you know, how can I help Ukraine out? You feel so uh, really apathetic after a while. Just, it, you, you know, and so I prayed, and, and all of a sudden it was maybe a week later I get an email saying, Hello, my name is Katarina. I'm I'm a swimmer. I have a 4.0. I want to come to America. You know, yada yada. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And then it said, but we we're in a war. We got bombed, shot at, and stuck in a basement for seven days. Did not know if we would see the sun again. And uh, I remember her saying in that letter, all we have left, honestly, coaches, are to hold on to is our faith. You know, and, you know, I wake up with bad breath, bad pizza, and I can't find my shirt, and I'm in a bad mood. This girl had not let, lost her dream, even in the midst of a war, and uh, talked to the president and some other teachers, and, and uh, the, the academic season was kind of over for scholarships, but they gave her an interview, and, I mean, she's 4.0. She works as hard as anybody, and I'll try to kill her in a workout, and she'll still say, thank you so much, my dear coach. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's, it really is a godsend, and, 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 and the culture we have, you know, with Jesus first, academic second, swimming, she, she really gets that. But talking to her and her family on the phone before they got here and crying, I think, as much as I have in 30 years of marriage. And today's my 30th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations, yeah. Coach. And uh, I think right. I've cried more with that family than my own uh, wife. Hi, honey. And... Um, but it, it is something, you know, like Coach Bowen was talking about, you become family. We had six of the internationals at our house for Thanksgiving because they can't go home. And Kathanina is like a daughter to me. So I tell her, thank you so much, my dear, dear daughter, you know. Uh, but God, 
My Bible says, you know, every kingdom, every nation, every tribe. And if you can't go there, then bring him here. That's what I say. Amen. Yeah. What's interesting about that is this young lady needed just a little bit of light. Yeah. And with that little bit of light, she is able to break through. Yes. And with your help and with Arizona Christian's help and your teammates and her family, it's amazing what you can do with belief. Like yes. you said, ho holding on and maintaining your faith. faith right. And then, and then capitalizing on that. That's yes. razor thin opportunity. That's right. Amazing. I mean, she's like an Esther, really. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 4.23 that above all else, don't lose heart. A lot of athletes are great athletes, and Michael knows this, that, that when they lose heart, it's just like they're half the person. And without the faith and the strength of God, you know, we're all in trouble. And so I, I have a shirt I'm still trying to make saying, not my way, but Yahweh. Because without his strategy, we really... And, but she held on to that dream. You imagine how, holding on to your dream and, and, and you, you're, you're being bombed. She's got a, she got a video of her, of her teammate in the same uh, housing complex they lived well, in Odessa, which is now no power, and her, and her, her teammate's screaming because they just got bombed. I mean, we don't, we don't know... The, all these sports that we have, all this um, American freedom, at least for the moment, what we really have. So we, we have a, our, our, our whole culture on our shirt is out-honor each other. If you can out-honor somebody, even if they, you don't like them, you're, you're loving them. Mm -hmm. And so we try to do that. And, and it, I, I really, you know, it's, it's like a mission trips where you, you think, you know, I'm going to go down near that third world country. I'm going to bless them and all that. And you come back, you're blessed. I mean, mm -hmm. she's blessed me. The team's blessed me. We're like a big family, and, and she's like a, you know, to a lot of the seniors, she's like the little sister they're guarding and, and learning how hard she works. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about that flavor on the team. I invite it, and, uh, you know, we, we do have Americans. Some people say, you just have foreigners. No, we have nine internationals, and the rest are Americans, and, and they complement each other. So it's great to see. That was one of the questions I had. Are the, with the different cultures in swimming, Again, is, are there some commonalities with those <laughs> cultures? I mean, I'm going to ask you about the yeah. in a minute, but are there different, were they, did they learn how to swim in a different way? Did someone give them different tools to, to work through? Yeah. How does that whole thing work? Yeah, cultural things are really interesting. I mean, I, I coached in Brazil, and I learned a lot of things not to say and a lot of gestures <laughs> not to do. But it's interesting, like, for example, you would think in Europe, like we've got Belarus, we've got Ukraine, we've got twins from Belgium. You would think that they would be more used to the cold. They're the ones freezing at morning workout tomorrow and the morning at 40 degrees and the, and the water's maybe 78, 79. The Americans here in Arizona are used to outdoor pools. Mm -hmm. There, they're used to all indoor, so it's all climatized. So okay. that, But also rules, you know, Europe uh, follows FINA rules and, and the NAIA is, is NCAA rules. So every so often we have disqualifications on... What we saw in the Olympics, and it's got to be right, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's, it, it, they do do that in the Olympics, but you cannot cross a lane in NAA. So, but it's a culture that we learn from each other. And, you know, if, to me, if you don't, if you, not that you want to get disqualified, but it makes it richer because, like even at Thanksgiving, I asked each student, what do you love about your country the most? And they went around and told cultural things that were very important to them. Interesting. Yeah. That is so cool. Well, Coach, the culture is, is sure working with your, with your men and women. You guys had a great meet over at Moon Valley over the weekend. The, yeah, the we did. The ladies and the men both showed out. Tell, tell us about, your, oh, uh, about the weekend, how great it was. You know, there, every so often there's a meet, there's a competition that's so sweet where nobody walks away sour, uh, at least that I saw. And I, I didn't try to close my eyes. <laughs> but, you know, there, there are times where uh, – and, and swimming is just so – objective i mean it's a time you're going to get a time and you know your best time and i tell the kids you need to know your best time shaved and in a compression suit you need to know your best time in season when you're tired you need to know your best time when altitude you need to know your best time when you're hairy and you know you're 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 just really torn down but we went there and uh i don't i mean we didn't have all best times we had some great swims but you know kind of like probably Jeff's season with the football, you know, there's this momentum that happens when everybody's positive, when everybody goes, you know what, it's not my best time, but I helped the relay, I, I learned something, 
And uh, I, I, I seriously, there was a crowd there, and I, GCU club team was there, and Ottawa was there, and I, I got so lost. I was having so much fun. I thought I was at a, I, I didn't really realize I was at a competition. I'm serious. It was one of those competitions where we're just cheering. Uh, I think most of the Moon Valley members heard us. We were so loud. Uh, so I might get a report on that. But it's one of those competitions where the momentum gets you more, that synergism of a team where they're cheering no matter what the times were. And we were off on a lot of times. But to see somebody get the reality that, you know, two-tenths of a second and you're crying about it or you're, you know, you, oh, I'm, I'm a failure, that's just that's a bad mentality. Mm -hmm. So I think it is just positive, and I, I hope we can keep that momentum going and have realistic goals as we're training harder. And we are, we are training as hard as we ever have here. So, you know, it was, it, was, I don't, it was joyful. I went away smiling. I think I woke up with cramps in my mouth just because it was smiling. It was happy. <laughs> yeah. Coach, I mean, that, that's a prominent win, right? If nothing else, uh, to win the relay, to, to begin the, the, the meet, was tone setting right yes. there. So you, you set the stage there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're familiar with GCU. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you helped. You know, you're almost an architect at that at that program, right? <laughs> yes, it's GCU club, but still. Yeah. And then anytime you get to go head to head with OUAZ, yeah, everybody's in on that, right? Yeah. So, right. Uh, uh, just the way that you were able to uh, get that done, and then you mentioned in the post about uh, uh, some synergy and and just the vibe that your team had. If you mm -hmm. would just elaborate on that as you came away there, successful, and then even. Even when you talk about how bad could it be, you see yeah. the plight of the young ladies literally here from Ukraine, and yeah. it, it can't be that bad. No yeah. matter what your time is, no matter how good or bad you swam, it's not that bad when you look at, at, yeah. at what's going on in our globe. Right. Yeah, it's sports. It, probably any sports can get psychotic, and, and you have to be real about your goals. You have, to, you have to know what is good, and you have to not even label it good. Did you have fundamentally sports should be joyful we started out playing it and when it becomes a prison you're already in the wrong course so so it was one of those meets where it was joyful we were cheering and we we're still screaming on that but I, that's the goal and and to to get that at an elite level uh and see that at nationals or conference that's the goal because that's when fear can overcome and we're that's what i'm trying to teach them because you're going to get that in life you're going to have things happen in your life and your attitude, which you can control, is going to determine everything, like Katarina. That's amazing. The bond, does that work between the, the young men and, young, and the young women? Are, are there, is there cross-training between both of these teams? Yeah, you know, a lot of teams have uh, girls and guys, men and women separate, um, and there are advantages of that. Uh, but, the, you know, the whole goal, out honor each other. That's what the Bible says That's in Romans. That's a good goal. Out honor. When you honor someone, even your enemy, even your opponent, you, you say, thank you for sharpening me. And when you're not doing that, you're not being a good sportsman. And that's what ACU is all about. That's what NAIA, you know, uh, Coaches of Character is all about. That's what we want to be about. So when we walk away, we're not only rejoicing and dancing like Brazilians who just won the World Cup. Sorry, I went to Brazil. And, uh, but it's also, it's a, it's a life attitude that they can learn from sports, and, and like Coach was saying earlier, that's a life skill, and you, you gotta, you've mm -hmm. got to develop that within your family. And these, a lot of these people are going to be lifetime friends. We get to go to different countries because they live there. I can't wait to go back to Belgium and yell some French and Dutch at some of the people I know there. You're starting to enjoy this recruiting bit a little bit, huh? You know, it used to Take be. Take advantage of it. I, you know what? <laughs> Here's the deal. It's a very tough thing, especially when you come here. Uh, I know uh, coming here the first year without a pool, it's hard, but when you ask God, bring the people that you want here and you see the hand of God in on it, it doesn't, it's not as, I mean, we have our numbers up and all, we got a pool, but still, who do you want here? And you believe that he's going to send them? It, it becomes, because mm. I get to tell them about Jesus, and I'm an evangelist, so that's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, we're going to have to pass on the question, how do you integrate 
uh, your ministry and swimming. So we're going to have to rain check that one. You can write. I'll, you read my book when I'm done with it, okay? We'll do that. Yeah. I, yes, absolutely. I like a signed copy, yeah. Brad. One other thing. Um, 50 bucks. You had 50 bucks. We'll do it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. We'll put, yeah. put it on the tab, right? Um, Tim will pay for I it. I wanted to ask you, and you're a second time guest, right? This, Mr. Herring is yes. the second time. So second congratulations time. on that. That doesn't happen Thank very you. often. You're going to join some elite crowd with Mr. Butterfield, yeah. too. He's in that category. Sounds but good. I wanted to ask you, and we can't do it, but I'm going to leave you with this question, is that I wanted to ask you what the difference is between pools and climate and that whole thing. So I just oh, yeah. wanted to act like I was a little bit intelligent because there's a, a wave of differences from one pool to the next. That's correct. correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how much time do I have? That's it. I That's got 30 seconds next. or less. 30 seconds. 30, 30 seconds. <laughs> well, deep water's faster. Colder water at 78 to 80 is denser. It's faster. Overflow gutters are a lot faster than non-gutters. Uh, starting blocks make all the difference with the wedge. Um, mm. You've got total dissolved solids that help. Atmospheric pressure. Width of the lane lines, are they six feet or are they eight feet? Water buoyancy. Buoyancy. Uh, salt water is no longer allowed for world records. So uh, there's a lot of factors to it. But, you know, bottom line is it's the heart. Because once it's all standardized, everybody's got the same water. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, you yep. can't go, oh, yeah, the water wasn't dense enough or whatever. Shut up. Keep going. You same know? water. Hey, it didn't bother Michael Phelps, the most decorated swimmer That's right. ever. That's right. Not at all. swam through all that. Not that we know of. And he ate McDonald's is what he said. That's so terrible. Uh, Brad Herring, our guest. A wealth of knowledge, great story, warm, fuzzy stuff. But uh, come on out to the Aquatic Center and, yeah. and take a, a look at Thanks, these man. men and women you, and, ex- and uh, support them. We had a blast with Mr. Herring here. He's also a former devil. You can't go along with that. All right, we're going to talk you. a little wrestling. We're taking it to Matt with the butter. Mr. Butterfield, straight ahead. Don't go away. We welcome you back inside the Tower Grill on the campus of Arizona Christian University. Joining us on the panel, we're going to talk a little wrestling. It's Coach Michael Butterfield. Butter, how are you, Michael? <laughs> Congratulations on your team's early success, and we welcome you back to the program. Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. I really appreciate you guys having me. Absolutely. It's, it's our pleasure three times, so that's a hat trick for you. So um, I know that there's some a lot of exciting things happening. So the first thing we want to do is just meet some of your guys. Let's, let's, let's learn a few about some of the players that we can get attracted to, that we can start to follow a little bit. Um, but three guys are right now on the surface of potentially entering the NAIA Top 25, and that's, that's newsworthy for you and your program. Yeah. No, and I mean, I, first off, if I could talk about every single one of my guys, um, you know, as the kids like to say, they're all dogs. <laughs> and uh, and that's dogs in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, and I love every single one of them. Um, but yeah, no. Um, at 133, uh, we have a freshman, true freshman, Terrell Kinlachini, um, right outside the top 25 at the moment. He just took third place at the Life University Open, probably one of the top three toughest NAI tournaments in the country. Took third place. Wow. Um, his only loss was to a guy from University of North Carolina. And then. Uh, Carlo Castanaro is uh, ranked in the top 25. He's number 17 at 165. Okay. He made it to the uh, national tournament last year as a freshman on the mat. And uh, 
made it to the round of 16. So having a great start to his season. And then uh, Caden Martin, who's also a freshman on the mat. Wow. So this youth, you've had a, a, an insurgence of some youth here. And they're yeah. paying off right away. Yeah. No, I mean, it's hard work. Um, every single one of our guys um, shows up to practice, works, you know, every single day is coachable, um, and I have an amazing assistant coach, uh, Jesse Hillhouse, who's just, um, and Nate DeSantiago, Cody Davis, all my assistants are amazing, but uh, I just have game changers all around these guys, um, and it's making huge differences right away. Outstanding. Yep. Coach, even before you guys went to Atlanta for, for, the, uh, for the life you opened, you went up to Prescott and, and, and performed really well at the mile high at the duels and the open. So give us a recap of that. You, you swept the duels, and then you, you, your team came out and played out, uh, and performed outstanding yeah. as far as achievement goes in, that, in the open. Yeah, no, I mean, we uh, at the duels, we went 3-0. and uh, we, beat, we dominated two of the duels, uh, one of them being Simpson, who's in conference. And then we beat New Mexico Highlands, a uh, Division II team, um, and who is you know, a high-quality team from New Mexico that, recruiting-wise, I you know, compete with for a lot of kids. So, um, no, it's great just to have um, the momentum building at, here at the beginning because we're really right at the beginning. Um, so the fact that we're off to that hot start and then just wrestling two days in a row, that's how the conference tournament and the national tournament are held. So we wrestled duels the first day, uh, tournament the second day. Um, our guys showed up ready to go. And uh, national level competition, top 10 teams in the country. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, every single guy showed up and was ready. I think we had six placers, I believe, so out of uh, the 13 that we brought that day. So, For those who may wonder, what's, what's the difference between duels and an open? What, is, what are the differences? Yeah, so a duel is just uh, one team versus one team. Uh, you wrestle 10 weight classes. Um, so even though there's an individual match score in each match, um, there's a team score. So if I beat somebody... Two to zero, I get three points for the team. If I pin somebody, I get six points for the team. So uh, obviously pins, things like that, are, are more valuable. So, um, yeah, we, we try to really get our guys uh, good on top. So. Okay. <laughs> Coach, you mentioned ten weight classes. Wow. Just out of curiosity, at one point in the Olympics, uh, the Greco-Roman and, and, you know, like in boxing, heavyweight was, was the division that people really want to clamor to, and that was the one that, that, that moved eyes. Uh, but in wrestling, 10 different weight classes, is there one more exciting than another? Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends what you like. I'm a little biased. I wrestled 149. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, obviously I like watching uh, the weight class that I wrestled. You kind of compare, you know. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> you know, if you like action, man, uh, 125, 133, it's just high pace. Like so those kids Tempo. Can go, go, go. Um, so if you like action... Um, we live in an era now where scrambling, right? So you get in these crazy positions, uh, you can wrestle through and end up getting takedowns. Um, if you like that stuff, that stuff's really good. If you like just, uh, some big, powerful, you know, wrestling, uh, guys getting after each other, heavy hand fighting, those upper weights are kind of, so it kind of okay. depends what you like. So yeah. But when you got 10, there's a little variety there for everybody. So if yeah. you come out and, mm -hmm. and watch and, and learn and maybe you'll, you'll, you'll pick up a, a, a preference. There. Yeah, and you know what I love about wrestling is every single one of our guys has their own style, uh, their own way of wrestling. It's my job to, you know, empower them in that style, also give them new tools to use. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, even however many years I am into this sport and coaching, um, I'm learning every day. I'm learning from our guys. We're learning from each other. It's very, you know, the whole moniker of iron sharpens iron. Sure. Mm -hmm. Very, very real, and it's not just between the wrestlers. It's between coaches as well. We're, we're all here to get better. You mentioned you've surrounded yourself with a great staff. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, my assistant coach, Jesse Hillhouse, he was a Division II national champion at CSU Pueblo. Mm. Um, phenomenal technician. Uh, coach Nate DeSantiago, um, that guy gets on the mat with those guys every single day. I was wondering um, if you did that. I, well, last night I was thinking about this. I wonder if the coach gets out there and, and oh, yeah. these dudes. You get out there, don't you, Coach? Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. I, I had a black eye about a week and a half ago. Really? So you'll often see me at duels oh. and meets. I'll be wearing a suit, and then I have this big black shiner. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just part of it. I broke my thumb about two months ago. It's finally healed. So it's just it's literally part of it. Um, now, someday that might not be the same, but I, if I have good left in me, I'm going to give it to these guys. So, and, and then how does that help with the bond between your young men and you to know that, for them to see that, okay, Coach B is going to get out here and get physical with us. He's going to get down and try to bring the pain just as much as we want to bring to each other. Yeah, I mean, I, I shouldn't, you know, in my view, I, I shouldn't ask them to do anything I can't do. Um, if they're, I'm going to ask them to do something. I show up to the lifts. I lift with them every day. Um, you know, just... It really does. It creates a bond. Uh, there was one day I, we were doing conditioning, 
And I was like, you know, I'm going to jump in with them. And one of the guys was like, that's my coach. And I was like, yeah, man, but I'm here with you. Like, we're in this together. Um, when guys are cutting weight, um, I help them cut weight. And I almost put my, it's weird. Uh, I guess it's kind of an empathy thing, but I kind of put myself through what they're going through so they know they're not alone. Um, you know, there was a couple instances last year where guys are cutting weight um, the night before a tournament. It's like, hey, man, I'll, I'll go and I'll roll with you. I'll put on stuff like I'm cutting weight with you. Um, it's just part of it. It's, um, it's a family, um, you know, and, and at the end of the day, wrestling, it comes down to those relationships and the people that um, help you build. So, yeah. That's cool. Yep. Coach Butterfield, I, I think we – I don't know if we asked you this before um, because if, if we had – you, this has been your third visit with us, yep. so it could it could be a question that is repetitive. But the, the weight cutting part that this can't be easy. Yeah. Um, how do you interact with that? And then what's a typical plan of attack if someone needs to shave, let's say, a half a pound or, yeah. or one pound? I mean, it might seem simple, but that also may seem like it'd be very difficult. Like I probably would have a hard time trying to lose a pound in the next twenty four hours. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I could do it, Ed. But I don't know. At the end of the day, hard. I think that there's a, there's a lot of excuses why somebody doesn't wrestle or doesn't like wrestling. But the, the real reason to me at the end of the day is it's a lifestyle. Um, you get done with practice, and you're not done. Um, what you eat, how you work out, the extra conditioning. Um, you know, when you, re- when you step out on a wrestling mat, it's you and one other person. Wrestling is a sport of exposure. Um, mm. When you step on a mat, it will be exposed what you're good at, what you're bad at, what you need to work on, how good a shape you're in, all that. Um, for seven minutes at a time. <laughs> and so um, it's really something that, um, you know, I talk about physical, mental, spiritual growth. Um, you know, you don't stop getting better once wrestling stops. Um, and so I'm really trying to build a culture of better never stops. We're here to constantly get better in everything we do. And instead of boiling down choices to good or bad, it's which, what's going to make you better? And that's a pretty easy question to answer most of the time. It, it's a great philosophy. Yeah. It yeah. is. Coach, you, your team is young, and I, I like what you're getting ready to do on Saturday. You're going to put this youth to the test. You're splitting your team up. Yep. Uh, a part of you guys are going to go to Costa Mesa. You're taking on Vanguard and Menlo. Your young kids are going to go to La, uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico for the, for the Doug Moses yeah. Open. I like that. T- tell the viewers what you're, what you're doing with your team this weekend. Yeah. So um, this weekend, um, you know, I'm thankful that we're in a great conference, the Cascade Conference, where, um, you know, we're going to have top 10, top 20 competition uh, this weekend. Um, great opportunities for our guys to get some ranked competition where, hey, you beat one guy, you're now not in the national rankings. Um, and the way our national qualifications work are based on national rankings. So the more guys there are ranked at a weight, the, the more guys go um, from our conference. So um, we're in probably the second toughest conference in the country. Uh, We get more allocations than just about every conference in the country. Um, So Vanguard and Menlo, those are going to be top-notch competitions for us. And uh, I was just telling the guys today, um, just be ready to step on the mat and go for seven minutes. Um, You know, be ready to push a guy to his absolute limit um, and push yourself to your limit. You're there to get better. And no matter what the result, if you stepped on the mat and you got better, that's all that matters. Um, but then our, uh, our other guys um, are going to go with my assistant coaches out to Las Vegas, New Mexico. Uh, definitely uh, try to drive that home. Uh, but <laughs> there's a big difference there. No, they're like, Nevada? No, New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> and so, oh, but they're going to go out there to the Doug Moses Open. And uh, once again, just great opportunities for our guys to step on the mat. Once again, wrestling, you have to step on the mat and expose what you're good at, what you're bad at, what you need to work on. Because then we come back to practice, and it's meaningful. Um, I'm not just having you drill one, a double leg for 30 minutes because I, w- I want you to get better at it. It's because it's something that we can see you need to get better at. Um, so giving opportunities to our guys. Um, we have a bigger team this year. And just having the opportunity for everybody to step on the mat is what wrestling's all about. Like, get out there. Um, make, make memories. Uh, get better. So... <laughs> Coach, you mentioned the numbers. That means if you have more bodies to work with and and more opportunity there, uh, that means that the recruiting has, in the last year and a half or so, has also improved. Yeah. And you've got some, uh, again, we talked about the youth here, but now you have this nice balance of of some elder statesmen, some some kids to bring in some new energy, uh, competitive kids at that. Yeah. Uh, So how is that part going for you? How, How is the growth 
you know, surfacing here at this point in the season? Yeah, I, first off, I love recruiting. Um, I love people, so I don't think that's by mistake that those things go together, that I actually enjoy that process. Uh, we were able to bring in uh, 17 new guys this year. Wow, good. Um, and so that is huge. Um, you know, having bringing in guys who, um, you know, we're consistently giving the guys that are here challenges to get better on the mat. Um, so that's exciting. Um, and once again, when, when you get a practice partner uh, that comes in and pushes you to your limit in the room every day, if I'm seeing you break in that room, good. Like, now, if it's happening every day, that's a different issue. But, uh, you know, if you're getting pushed to your limit, good. I couldn't hope for anything more on a wrestling mat for you. Some guys don't have that. Um, so to have that um, in a room, have coaches who will help to do that, um, just all the... You know, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle that are absolutely fitting this year. So I'm really um, excited for the future. Um, we're just getting started. So, and I told the guys, when you start winning big matches, I'm just going to shrug my shoulders. I'm going to say, hey, I ain't surprised. Mm -hmm. You know, um, y you guys are going to do some big stuff this year. So. You've instilled that confidence, and, and, and you can tell. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun, too. They, they go nuts for each other. We have a good family atmosphere as well, so. The physical part of practice, that's a necessary part of practice. But how important is the, the part of watching video, of, of the kids watching the video of their matches, watching, watching it back to see, like you said, what, can, what I can get better at. I can actually see yeah. what I did in that match, the things I did good, the things I did bad, and the things I really need to improve on. Yep. The video aspect of getting these kids better. Yeah, we film everything, um, and I upload it to a drive so that the guys can go through and watch their matches almost the, immediately the day after. Um, it's huge. I mean, I can tell you what I'm seeing, but unless you see it yourself, it, there's this ownership that you're able to take, like, oh, I didn't realize that. Um, so even just, like, small tendencies. We were on the plane on the way back from Atlanta, and I was sitting next to one of our guys, and he's like, yeah, I can't tell why guys are getting so deep on my legs. And I'm like, well, look, it's, it's every single time you're stepping this way, you're heavy on your heel. And he's like, oh. <laughs> you know, it's like that aha moment. Um, that, Seeing is believing. Yeah, right? yeah, and I mean, I can tell you till I'm blue in the face, but if you actually see it yourself, now you have ownership. You know what you need to work on. You can go to practice on your own, start practice early, and get going the stuff that you need to work on. So, I got a new respect for the seven minutes that they refer to. Right? Yeah. You talk about seven putting, minutes. On, putting, you know, mono mono. You're on an island right there. Yep. You know, it's a high wire act. Are you gonna yeah. you gonna balance it and get across, or you know, right? You know what the bottom looks like. So I, well, I think that's amazing that you put it in those terms uh, because that's it's something that everybody could certainly understand and relate to. Yep. What are you going to do in that seven minutes? Yeah, I mean, it, at high levels, it comes down to who can identify tendencies and um, identify mistakes or cause mistakes. So um, if I can get a guy to step a certain way um, and I get to where I want to, um, once again, if I can cause that tendency. So that's when I'm coaching a lot of the time. You know, there's a million different moves and a hundred different names for every single one of them. And so uh, I can sit there and yell stuff, but really I'm trying to get the guys to recognize tendencies. Hey, what's, what's there based on what this guy's given you? But also, how can you create the, the action that you want in order to open a guy up? Because at the end of the day, everybody starts a match in a wrestling, ma or mm -hmm. wrestling stance. So you're in good position to start. How am I going to break that position? <laughs> right. You know what I Everybody's mean? Everybody's in great position. Yeah. Right. Sometimes, you, most of the time. So. Say rest, <laughs> wrestle and then the p position changes yeah. all of a sudden, doesn't Third it? period yes. starts. You might not be in as good a position. <laughs> so those stances start to, to raise a little bit. So Strength and technique are important in matches, but how important is the mental aspect of one man being, me being mentally stronger and wanting it more than the other man? Yeah, I mean, the... You know, it's it's probably the oldest cliche in wrestling, but 90% mental, 10% physical. Um, once again, at high levels, um, it's really who's going to make the first mistake, who's gonna uh, who's gonna break. And and I tell you what, if you can break somebody on the mat, um, they start putting their head down. Um, you're scoring points at will. Um, the next time you wrestle that person, you have an advantage. They know that you broke them, or it gives that person something to train for. Um, so it's something that. Um, it's a fine line to walk, but it is mental. It's, uh, you know, we talk a lot about just mental preparation and uh, the mental side of wrestling because, uh, you know, there's entire businesses out there. There's a business called Wrestling Mindset. Their whole thing is just literally training wrestlers for wrestling. Um, so it's just really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and now you look at, like, MMA, um, they're starting to dive into more of that stuff too. You know what I mean? So, sure. But wrestling's been talking about it for 
years and years and years. So I just love the fact from where you began this program to where you are now, and just how you just described it. Like, ah, we're on a plane coming back from Atlanta. Like that's routine. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. So you're going to another meet, and, and uh, you know you're able to travel and do some of those things, and what, what those could be amazing experiences for not only your staff but the interaction with your student athletes too. Those yeah. are, those types of trips. Uh, I think you can only. Uh, improve and grow with yeah. those types of exposures. You know, and and I just want to um, re uh, get you know reiterate that just ACU is a very special place, and um, I don't even know if you know what's happening here happens everywhere. I don't know, but uh, I know that what's happening here is extremely special, mm -hmm. and it's not by mistake. The fact that we integrate faith, family, wrestling, um, everything together. Um, these guys are meant for really special stuff, not only this year, but in the future, in their future careers and their families and everything like that. So uh, I'm just thankful to call myself their coach. And, uh, you know, they're, once again, when they start doing big stuff, I'm just going to tell them, hey, I ain't surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm inspired by you, Coach Butterfield. We appreciate your time and your candor, as always, and uh, we wish you guys success going forward and, and those kids and that infusion of youth and just that balance that you have. We're kind of pumped up for you. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yes. yeah, keep track because yeah. uh, we're on the way up. All so. right. I, I know you have an Thank open you, invitation yep. to come back. You could be the fourth time. Who knows? we got some great things to talk about down the road. But, hey, let uh, me know. Continued success to you and your staff, and we thank you again. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Coach. Thank you. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the – Storm Report, episode 10 is in the books. We want to thank head coach Jeff Bowen and all the people that followed ACU football throughout the entire campaign. We thank you. And, of course, a special thank you to Brad Herring, our ACU men's and women's uh, swimming coach, and then the man over here we call Butta, Mr. Michael Butterfield. Butta. And then, of course, Devin Williams behind the set and our SID, Mr. Tim Gosen, and my broadcast partner, Ed Cole. We look forward to seeing you guys next week. Until next time, so long for now.